Welcome to the PI Podcast, Political Insights for the Palaging Inis. I'm your host, Matt, and with me is my co-host, political scientist, meme lord, and currently Nuno rights activist, currently fighting for the legalization of human and Nino, uh, Nuno marriages board. <laughs> No, no, right. So, okay, that, that's that's even I'm surprised by that. <laughs> love is ano, love. Ano, ano, represent, representative ng mga nuno. <laughs> okay, uh, PA nyo, PA nating lahat, Borge here to service. Yes, and this is a special episode. This is episode, uh, what number again, Borge? Uh, 17 na tayo, 17 na tayo. 17, and this is a special episode because we are going into pop culture. Uh, particularly the Dresse animated series. Yeah, that mm. has been... Um, hit the world by storm right now and board uh what do you think about this so far initial impressions you know well you uh, it? i managed to watch it within a couple of bars i think i binged it well uh, i am more interested with the graphic novel so i'm gonna find oh. copies of those mm-hmm. no it's still ongoing actually it's been around for like what 15 years and it's still going so okay so, yeah we will uh, link to where you can get copies you know maraming, so you can join maraming, the fun reading na kailangan gawin. Anyway, yeah. so <clears throat> first impressions, I, I, it was it was fine. It was mm-hmm. uh, I didn't judge it as a uh, crime anime series so, okay. because I, I have higher standards for crime-oriented series. <laughs> and oh, it wow. doesn't fit there, but it does fit with the uh, popularization of uh, Philippine culture. So mm-hmm. kind of kind of amusing to more or less uh, see pop culture references, folklore in the Philippines being. Uh, I, I watched the English dub, so oh. that's amusing. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's it's fair. I'm waiting for the next uh, series or next season of it. Okay. And well, our, but for this special episode, you know, not, no, we're both going to discuss it with our, you know, special guests, you know, friends that are mm. also fans of the series. And they have a lot to say. Uh, besides, of course, being fans, they're also social sci- scientists, so they can merge the, their insights on both areas you know, in this discussion mm. today. So it's going to be a very, uh, it's going to be very insightful, very, like a, a whole package, you know, a yeah. three and one plus one at <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for our first guest, uh, you already know him from our episode 13 from Catholicism. You know, he also has a lot to say about Philippine folklore, you know. Uh, he is, remember, uh, well, let's welcome back Jules Karandang. <laughs> I got hmm. that right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you got that right now. Where is Jules? <laughs> no, wala, wala ang connection to Jules. Ayan na, oh. pa, 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 na siya. Ayan na, ayan na. Oh, okay. All right, we'll just edit this out. <laughs> All right. So, please welcome. Wait. Welcome back, Hi, Jules I I, Karandang. I, I yeah. I think I got kicked out or something. Oh, eh? my. Well, welcome back. <laughs> so, <laughs> time. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, and... That we have a new guest, first time on the podcast, but longtime friend of ours. Yep. Uh, he was our, well, we used to all teach in the same university. He was actually my batchmate entering in La Salle. <laughs> uh, he is, now he's working in the foreign service. Uh, we have Glenn Te. Hello. Say hello, Glenn. Bros. Uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So Thanks. while we're on the topic, let's ask your first impressions, starting with Jules. What do you think? And of course, um, your relationship with the original material. Like, what do you think, Jules? Okay. So it was uh, what mid two thousands when it actually came out, right? Mm-hmm. So the thing that attracted it more, like my interest, was peak, is because at the same time we had this literary phenomena of Pinoy horror comics. And mm-hmm. it tied up with all of that. Same time, there was also the, the popularization of Mary Sue characters in anime mm-hmm. or the resurgence of Mary Sue characters or um, female characters who are very much overpowered. Mm-hmm. So whether or not it filled that same template, during the mid-2000s, uh, the Trece character in the story felt pretty much at home if, mm-hmm. if you could compare it with those other characters. Um, mm-hmm. And the thing that really piqued my curiosity is essentially the folklore that inspired the universe of Trece. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing to also consider is one observation that I got out of it is it gives vibes that are sort of like a um, combination of uh, the premise of uh, John Constantine yeah. But the vibe of uh, Ghost in the Shell, 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, and then the premise is, I don't know why it could be because of the color or because of the uh because of how it's presented. Mm-hmm. It it gives you the vibe that it's homegrown. You know how yeah. uh, how how it's drawn. It, you know it's something that's very much you can relate to. Hindi iba mm-hmm. eh. It's how how the characters are developed. Even if you don't actually put dialogue in the bubbles, there is something about how they're drawn that makes you recognize some of these characters. So perhaps oh. that would be it. Mm, comic yeah. style ba? Comic style bang art nila? Uh, uh, Pinoy eh. comics eh. Me, me, medyo, mm-hmm. medyo. Yeah, th- um, remember, during the 2000s, Marvel um, experimented with manga Marvel. Mm. And then a lot of these artists actually have uh, ano, have yung manga hybrid with comics. And that's how I feel how how it came to me yung how they present the animation mm. oh. so yung yung when you look at it you know it's supposed to portray as if it's for a foreign audience but mm. its actual universe is set something similar to yours mm. but the caveat is what made what I attracted it to me is because it was set pretty much during the 2000s late 90s 2000s Philippines that's what attracted it to me because it felt my time or at that time. Right. That's the, the thing that came to me. No. But beyond that, it's more of, it felt familiar. I think that's what the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. It felt familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's an important thing to consider. Like, because I think even during that time, I remember you talking about there was an explosion of uh, like Filipino style manga, you know, it's yeah. very colorful, huge eyes, Asian style. But this one tried to, in a way, be its own thing, but also Filipino. And I think it's it's actually, for me, what struck me as Filipino, besides, of course, the setting, it's you feel that it's in Manila. But also, like, the way it's inked and drawn, as what you've said, mm. like, it's almost with the knowledge that you need to save up on ink because ink is very expensive. It's ve- But also, I think it matches the crime noir supernatural kind of feel it's mm. meant to be so yeah interesting how about you glenn like how what's your relationship with the original theater and how did you find uh the adaptation uh yeah no so i actually i, I definitely relate with uh what jules said because if you look at the setting and yung feel niya, it's really more of our batch major batch mate kami ni jules diba? mm. Medyo mas bata kayo ni uh, um, but yeah, I think I, I honestly don't remember um, how I got into it. I know mm. I I heard I, I heard from it from somewhere, and mm. ano lang, siguro at that time I think I was dabbling in a lot of um, pop literature. Um, kasama dito yung what's this? I I. I'm not sure if it was the same time, but what comes to mind right now is a lot of Rick Riordan, uh, uh, sila, ano, uh, Olympus, so Greek mythology. I, I, I'm really big into mytho- mytho- ano, mythology, ori- ano, origin stories. Mm-hmm. So Greek mytho- uh, mythology, Roman mythology. And then one of the other things I've been reading is, ano, of course, Sandman. Right. Uh, so okay, Neil Gaiman, which is also... One of the biggest uh, fr- from uh, once I started reading Treasure, you find uh, I found out that I know see I know see Neil Gaiman is one of the uh, biggest and uh, then influences nila budge, and then besides that, I know not really in I know intensely into Marvel DC, but I remember. I also read during this time see I know see Kingdom Come sa oh, si yeah. Wars no so mm-hmm. all these things and then yon somehow I heard about this kasi I know parang I was think I, I think I had an idea uh, of writing a, something Rickley or then a YA mm-hmm. novel mm-hmm. Um, but using Philippine mythology so mm-hmm. naturally RRL. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think that's how I came into discovering Trece. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And yun, uh, with the art. So yung art panels niya is great. Si Kaja really does well. Yeah. And lalo na yung sadya na black and white lang siya. So I was drawn to that. Mm-hmm. I, I know colors are great, but for me, I know, the black and white uh, style really uh, mesmerizing for me. And then, yun, of course, yung mythology. Yeah. Uh, okay. As I said earlier, that's what really reeled me in, I think. So, yeah. yun, I know, yeah. yun, completo siya. And then, uh, recently, lumabas si Bloodlines. Appar- mm-hmm. uh, I had until book five. Apparently, may book six na. I missed that. So, oh. I bought I that. So. Mm. I, I bought it together. See si book six, uh, see si bloodlines, mm-hmm. and then suddenly, I uh, my Netflix now. So that's fun. Yeah. But I think yeah. we can get more into the anime side later. But definitely, sure. the treatment with the um, the books or the novels or the graphic mm-hmm. novels or comics versus yung anime. So for mm-hmm. me, I treat them as different, you know, uh, entities yeah. put together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In yeah. fact, I actually, yeah, I actually shared that, um, but you know, back in the day when I was uh, in high school, I my regular hobby was going to national bookstores, fully booked, power books, going straight to the graphic novels and looking for walang plastic. So I would read it, uh, like for alikod, hours. Alikod, uh. alikod, exactly, yeah, to look for the open uh, comic books, and it just so happened that one of those were was like trese. Murder at Balleted Drive. I think that was the um, the one, and I I I was so intrigued by it. I it was very cheap actually compared to the others because uh like a trade paperback of like an entire full story uh is probably around a thousand, a little more than a thousand back in the day. So, but this one the at at least the first volume of Jesse, I think it was around two thousand and ten when I started. It was only about 200 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. So it was very cheap. And I think it was meant for a local audience because of the price <laughs> and also the printing. So it felt like ours, you know, especially mm-hmm. with, you know, the, the references to Filipino folklore in Aswang and the uh, Tikbalang. Mm-hmm. And what really, when I, when I watched the, the, when I watched the uh, series, the Netflix series, I, Actually, well, they highlighted the art style, the huge land, like uh, skyline of, Maca- of Manila, you know, and the slums. But it somehow there's something about it that didn't feel like, you know, th- didn't feel like you were there, like because in the actual comics, there's a- there were maps of like, oh, you were in Fort Bonifacio, <laughs> Cubao, in Tondo, etc. And you actually, and so it helped uh, establish the atmosphere and. You would know as a Filipino who lives here or who have lived here and, um, that, that that's that, that's where they're talking about. You know, that's that's where the story is. But I think it could have been made more clear with what the locations were mm. in the uh, in the animated series, or even like maybe a, a better, a more detailed description of like the creatures were. Like it would have been. It, I mean, it would have helped if there was like a. Who's that Pokemon or like a segment where they <laughs> Who's explained? That Who's that Nuno or something? Who's that uh, Mananangal or something? So, uh, at, at least it. Well, as of this recording, the the sales for the Trese comic books were sold out, and they're on its second printing in the United mm-hmm. States. So people are getting interested in the original material. Lava was lava commercial special panels like the one in AOT, where in pag may commercial break, merong uh, description. Of certain factors in the story, but it's a Netflix. There should, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, guys, you have to understand what they are selling is essentially just a reprint of the original. And mm. as we have talked earlier, lahat yan is essentially for Filipino consumption. So no brainer na dapat kung ano yung uh, hits, ano yung mga quote unquote creatures of the night. Right. Mm. Having said that, when it was um, developed further. We assume that the the reader continued reading on, so it's mm-hmm. it's it's highly preferred that you begin with the very first story instead of sa gitna o sa likod ka. At mm-hmm. the same time, the premise of the Netflix is you are so well again it's Netflix, so you yeah. have to hmm. also consider that it's designed as a way to entice viewers. So before they yeah. create. The universe itself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most most um, 
Western development of story is devoid of myth. Mm. It's the myth building which creates anticipation for the next storyline. Mm-hmm. So that's where you create everything. Because yeah. if you fit all of the, quote-unquote, the lexicon of creatures within the narrative, one, you're going to dissuade potential listeners or viewers or readers mm-hmm. because it will overwhelm them or it might not be palatable to their mm. taste. Second, you do not have the time. Yeah. And third, <laughs> most important of all, you will preempt the development of the character. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the thing to me is, when you read the actual Trece uh, series, the first yeah. thing to ask, I, I will ask the three of you, when you read it, was it in Filipino or was it in English? It was a bit of Taglish, actually. Bingo. Like, yeah. Because, again, as Glenn and I have uh, acceded, I believe it was meant for our generation, wherein we're transitioning from the Filipino as a way to put in the technical aspect of the folklore and the mm. English to highlight the educated perspective or the modern sensibility into the story. So mm. it's not about superstition but about how to address the superstition in modern times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, that, but that requires a Filipino sensibility from the very beginning, wherein you mm-hmm. can differentiate fact, fiction, folklore, and most anything in between. Mm-hmm. Like, um, essentially, when you look at Crispin and Basilio, the yeah. rejects from the Matrix. I'm sorry <laughs> to say. Yeah. That's just my... Remember the twins in the Matrix? The twins. Yeah, yeah with the dreadlocks. Yeah, so this guy... So they're essentially a, a variation of the narrative of twins. Um, and twins being guardians of humanity. Something mm. that aspect. Yeah. Uh, now, again, going back. So... And that's why I believe they actually did it well when they did the mm-hmm. six-part piece. Because mm-hmm. I agree with you, Matt. It should be treated as separate things. Mm-hmm. The literature, mm-hmm. the writing, my belief, should be treated separate and distinct from the actual TV, much like right. how GOT was presented, much like yeah, how Game most, mm. most um, visual presentations are, because you have to consider that, yes, the creators were part of it, but mm-hmm. you have screenwriters, you have the storytellers in the TV media, so showrunners so to speak so yeah. sila ang nagdadala ng kwento na to mm-hmm. and if you ask my simple honest comment I like how they fleshed out in Netflix because mm-hmm. it is designed for a greater international audience yes mm-hmm. yeah. It, yeah. It, if you are a Filipino purist it will not appeal to you as much because you're mm-hmm. expecting certain cues that says right. Pinoy to Mm-hmm. One good, I'll just reference one simple thing. Mm-hmm. Haven't you noticed that the Asquang are like Nosferatu? <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah. laughs> Classic yeah, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are a foreign audience, automatic, that visage will tell you it's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. That visage mm-hmm. will tell you there's something evil about that, about that depiction. Mm-hmm. So it's it's what they represent, and then beyond that representation, what they actually mean. In the, in the narrative. <laughs> mm. There's also one aspect there that I really like on how they yeah. develop one simple storytelling is mm. you, you look at the difference between the treatment of Guerrero, the character Guerrero, yeah. and the treatment of, let's say, Commissioner Gordon and Batman. Yeah. If, they had, the a better rela- if they had a better relationship, then you would have Trece and uh, Guerrero, quote unquote, mm. you are a licensed detective. Mm. So it's yeah. more like um, uh, Lestat and Sherlock Holmes in that effect. Mm. That you are an unpaid consultant or you're a paid consultant. That's because that, yeah. that's one of the gray areas for me. Mm-hmm. How is she getting paid for her services? Mm. I believe she uh, owns the diabolical, right? The a bar. I but yeah. I, yeah. I think that's when, a, do, yeah. when doing the supernatural stuff. There should be a level of compensation for that. Ah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, that's my Filipino thing because yeah. there's a professional aspect. You can't be a ghostbuster and not earn a tab, yeah. right? Mm. 
Unless I, she's a licensed supernaturalist and we mm. don't have, we, we're not we're actually clear on that even in the literature. <laughs> right. Diba? She has mm-hmm. a working relationship, but I've always been curious. Can she put that as a tax break? <laughs> Community <laughs> service. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of uh, a lot of questions on the world building here. Yeah, yeah I think, and that's why yes, the merch, literature is yeah. important because the world building yeah. has a mm-hmm. grounded feel, whereas mm-hmm. the TV show, the world building is just beginning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, I, I can only comment on the anime series right now. Oh, uh, mas marami na oras para basahin yung uh, uh, graphic novel itself. But mm-hmm. for now, just, just uh, I think just to feed on. Uh, everything that has been said the anime series as it is right now is a convergence of first the the, the need to internationalize so mm-hmm. need to internationalize so between internationalization and filipino sensibility mm-hmm. and you have here as far as your stories are concerned regarding the graphic novel itself even how it is written and how it is portrayed it is a convergence of tradition mm-hmm. uh, our tradition of comics and of course our own folklore with uh-huh. relatively more modern sensibilities bridged by pop culture. Because we, we have a long chain of, of course, horror series right. uh, that familiarizes entire generations on our own set of mount- monsters. So mm-hmm. th- I think that is why the anime series have caught the attention of so many people from all, so many backgrounds because it, it offers so much, not only folklore, yeah. but also mm-hmm. a look into Filipino culture on one hand. And on mm-hmm. the other, the usual... Good versus evil tropes. You have the as you mentioned, ni, ni Jules, which is trope ng makambal. And mm-hmm. uh, but then again, uh, you know something about the anime that I I, I don't want to judge the anime as uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. I don't want to judge it as a crime detective story. Yeah, I, I seriously don't because that would depreciate the value of <laughs> the anime well, itself. I don't know about the graphic novel. In the graphic novel, is is Alexandra a good detective? <laughs> Uh, um, she has to be because okay. they, yeah well um, yeah uh, I, I think ahead, where Matt is sorry about that um, mm-hmm. what Porch is commenting is the framework of a police procedural right yes. Porch mm-hmm. yeah that yeah, has never more, been clarified whether more, or not you could say it fits the police procedural then yeah, not simply, really police procedural but investigation because uh, no no that's yeah. what is considered procedural okay yeah. yung ano when someone in, uh, someone who is uh, doing detective work Mm. So, so you have the template is a crime is involved. You have the investigation, mm. and then the rising uh, element is when they're finding the motive, and mm. then when the you find out how they did it, the who done it part, and all of that. Yeah. So mm. that's what's called a police procedural. So essentially, mm. that's a template for um, for crime stories. This is essentially mm. supernatural crime story, which mm. is popularized by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm. which in itself is a good source because he himself liked the supernatural. So again, there is mm. that mix and match. But the premise here is, on the face value, the, the cartoons actually makes it look out that it's more, pro- more police procedural template. But when you look at it from the aspect of the literature itself, okay. not so much given there are more stories in between when you flesh mm-hmm. it out. And uh, it's more anthology based. Oh, okay. So, so when you can actually, um, well, Glenn can actually also add into this. When you look at the liter- literature source material, you should mm. look it into the years in her life. Mm-hmm. So, may progression ng at this point of her life, at this point of her life, at this point of her life. Right. Okay. So, yung hero's journey niya, literally lifetime niya. Yeah. Okay. So, yun yung more ganun yung kanyang narrative. More, more classical hero, more mm. Greek hero sa, sa literature, mm. more police detective story that we only have six episodes. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the effect that comes out. Yeah. Because yeah, well, during the entire anime, she's always one step behind <laughs> the antagonist, <laughs> which, which is, like, again, for, as far as my knowledge of uh, crime fiction is concerned, you have, uh, you have two types. You have one, you have the archetype of uh, Sherlock Holmes and Hercule Poirot of uh, Agatha Christie. Okay. So you have um, you, you, the, you, the, the, Holmes and Poirot, they, they always outrun the villain eventually. So in, yeah. the, in this, they, they, they're, they're, they, they start off as one step behind, but they eventually yeah. outrun. Hindi ka gaya sa anime na sa ending na lang nalaman ko, okay, sino ko trepida? Okay, yan pala. <laughs> okay, now, uh-huh. now, the thing to consider with the animation, let's just focus mm. on the first episode. Okay. The first episode actually has what 
a Chekhov's gun. And do you know what mm-hmm. the actual Chekhov's gun there? It is the treaty with the Aswangs. Mm-hmm. It is always referenced. Mm-hmm. So while the father was negotiating the treaty, a tribe went to kill the mother and the daughter. The mm-hmm. mother died, she survived, but the treaty was enacted. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And that is, and it was the treaty that was handicapping her in the first episode, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. why she could not follow up on her instincts or in her suspicion mm-hmm. because she was bound to, quote-unquote, uphold the commitment. So she yeah. could not be the bad cop mm-hmm. until to the point wherein the Aswangs themselves recognize an eye for an eye, literally, creating <laughs> the pact. And at that mm-hmm. point, when the Aswang commented that the pact is void, then mm-hmm. you the part there when automatically the twins come out and the twins say that the twins, mm-hmm. we have freed the people at the back. The fact that she runs up front chasing mm-hmm. after the bad guy means she already has an inclination that she has to deal with the bad guy. Yeah. And it's a premise that she knew from the start all of these. Mm. But she could not because she was bound by three things. Mm. One, because there was the pact. Two, because she keeps to the law, mm-hmm. which is why it's the gray area. Is she actually a legal representative? <laughs> yeah. Because she binds herself to law. Remember, mm-hmm. she had to go through the procedure wherein the police had to find the criminal, the mayor liable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the third most important part is she had to commit to the role as Babaylan that if you find evil, you dispatch evil. Mm-hmm. She could not forgive them for what they did. Mm-hmm. She, they had to, quote-unquote, be judged as, for her role. Yeah. So there mga limitations she. Mm. Right. So again, that's why she always seems like she's a step behind. Right. The thing with all six episodes is something is keeping her back. And that's mm-hmm. the funny thing. What's keeping her back is she's trying to commit to tradition. She's trying to commit to the what is expected uh, right. out of her. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and that is the handicap she they had yeah. to put on Trese because literally she mm-hmm. could kick anybody's ass without thinking. <laughs> So I think that's the simplest way to handicap her. That's just my opinion again. That's just yeah. how I read into it. Right. Actually, it, it's not. She's not so much a detective. I think she's incidentally a detective. Remember, she's a babaylan, a priestess. Mm. Mm. You know, and the thing is, and really, uh, it takes the format of a literary detective story. But really, it's not like the question is not whether or not she will have. Uh, she can solve the puzzle. She has to because it's simply a device to reveal. The monster of the week, which was the original format of the mm. of the, the comic book, so it's like this week it's an aswang, this week it's a white lady, next it's a nuno, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, which she's more like Scooby Doo in the gang. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, fair. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Kaya, kaya nga, sa psycho, I don't want to judge it as a crime fiction because yeah. she she's performing a uh, in, ano lang accidental lang na <laughs> kailan niya magimbestiga. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No, uh, but the, I think they use that as a way. To introduce characters, or at least mm-hmm. to integrate her into society, which is again, in a part, it's a convergence of the supernatural with the human society. Yeah, fair. I mean, I mean, that's one thing that I found weird. I mean, the of course the comic book, it's clear. It's it, she is simply a device. She's not even a character for the first three volumes. She's not even a character. She is simply a device to show the world of the supernatural Manila. But it, it, but yeah, but Trese. Uh, the animated series, uh, she they integrated her like character. She has emotions, a backstory, and it was the mix is kind of odd, you know. I mean, mm. she's very stoic, and that's why it led to another debate we can talk about later on. But yeah, she, like she has emotional back turmoil. She has like she cries a lot more. In the original one, it's like she's very like she barely has any eyes, you know, barely any expression. She's just plain, e- drawn in a black and white world. She's Lara Croft. Lara Croft. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. Well, Lara Croft is a bit more like sexualized, to be honest. She's based, <laughs> yeah. Tressa is very asexual in the books. You know, you can't you can barely tell she's a girl. <laughs> See, Tressa yeah. is parang, ano, parang avatar siya between mortals and the underworld, right. diba? mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Ano, if I may interject at this point, sure. you know. So ano naman, um I know. 
I, I agree with some, I disagree with some. Okay. Uh, but with some context also, I think it, it, the the film felt like it was a bit of a one shot series mm. parang mm. Uh, you have to understand na they've been trying to uh, take you know take at, at for the project to take off for mm-hmm. a decade at least yata mm-hmm. or around that time so i think finally they have a chance and they yeah they had to put it and make it interesting so of course im- nag-iba yung flavor talaga for example right nilabas nila si Talag Busaw and in the source mm-hmm. material he doesn't come out until book three yeah. when people already are starting to mm-hmm. ask about where the uh, Kambal came from which yun, I agree no Matrix so nakikita mo talaga yung uh, what's this background ng uh, source material then yeah. uh, you have Matrix you have Avatar you have Lord of the Rings you have uh, Neil Gaiman you have yeah. all these people coming together and yeah but uh, no, I think maganda na main twist um, like with the Kambal hmm. uh, tawag dito uh, they originally wanted them to be ano, half a swang and then later on uh, I think it was the illustrator si Kajo who said no yeah. There, we can make them something else, and then they mm-hmm. became the, I know, no, the sons of Talag Busao. But mm-hmm. yun, I think, I know, eh, kumbaga nag iba. And right. why they couldn't uh, pinpoint things more in the series, I think they mm-hmm. also discussed that. Na, yun, I think my rights, it's oh, a right. copyright thing, no, where they can't, no, because one of the things that was good in the Books, de ba per segment? May kita mo there in Edsa or there yeah, in yeah. the drive, mga ganyan. But yeah, I think I know. I have really no complaint about the anime, and if you've seen the chat rooms <laughs> ng Trese, <laughs> ano then which I'm also part of. I just no. <laughs> yeah, I'm a passive reader. I know. Okay. Yeah, even the term anime is I know is Contested. up for debate, de ba? Yeah. So. I don't. Ako, I I veer away from calling it that also. But yeah, sa akin hindi siya reklamo, but more of observation para mm-hmm. neutral. Ano mm-hmm. lang like in the very first episode of the of the show, if, of the Netflix show, and the ba it starts. It's really the classic story, and the mm-hmm. primary story is really the murder of, ano, the murder of the white lady in Balete Drive. I think mm-hmm. that's really the. And then the clincher that's the most Pinoy thing that oh, yeah. you, mm-hmm. ano, that you can think of. Right. So for me, yun, ang ganda kasi, ano, okay siya sana. But mm-hmm. ano, knowing the source material na they showed naman in the, in the show na, yeah. yun, it's because of a scorn love or whatever. But yeah. remember what happened in the source material at the end. And sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> and someone someone else's replaces that white lady ah that. yeah yeah so, that's a good one mm. so i know eh, parang sayang kasi that could have said something na uh, diba parang when the under if, if you take something parang they kept talking about balance but that was the for me yeah. that could have been the perfect way to you know, set the tone uh, yeah. that someone else becomes the white lady and then, oh. boom, you have this really, so, no. really so, ano, ano siya, thing that would happen. Uh, this actually fits the love ni, ano eh, ni Glenn sa Greek mythology. Persephone, yeah. wife of Hades. Mm. Yeah. Yun yung, ano, happy yung time niya because someone has to spend time mm-hmm. in a certain place. Someone has to be grounded. Ano mm-hmm. Maganda yung mga inspirations ng narrative. Tama si Glenn mm-hmm. doon. It could yeah, have been yeah. so, taken differently. Ano, hmm. Definitely. So, yung sa, ano, uh, yung sa show, I mean, yeah. understand it. And yeah, it could have been more, ano, uh, sa source material. But yeah, right. I, I think yung sa context na yun, trying to get out the project for the longest time. And oh, yeah. Having this chance, you don't know if it will click or not. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean. I yeah, it's a practical measure. The click naman. So, they, they would have more opportunities to flesh out the, the source material. Also, yeah. There is actually a simple loophole dito, guys. Eh. Mm. So, if you're familiar with the Fate Stay series. Oh, oh my okay, God. Don't yung, even start. Ano, yeah. yeah. So, so, essentially, you could have different variations using the same character narrative. Yeah. So, mm. pwedeng patikim lang to and then eventually, they could reinterpret it 
something more related to the actual story. You don't have to reboot it. Eh. Yeah. Remember, this Sample is a fairy lang. tale. Eh. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. you can always have something for the purists and something more for casual ano, um, viewers who want right. to delve more but not over, be overwhelmed. Right. We never know. Palaging ni mga opportunities. Mm. Saka dahil siya ay in animated form. Simple yeah. way to ano to avoid any debate. It's an animated uh, media. Yeah. Not necessarily anime, not necessarily cartoon, but it's an animated lead, uh, media. Mm-hmm. Which is very common now. Ano eh, which is a very common way to actually maximize budget, opportunity, and, yeah. ano, and viewership. Dahil ano siya eh, imagine mo 30 minutes per episode. Hmm. So that means if given enough time, palatable siya. Hindi siya, hindi, naka-binge ka nga, burge, di ba? Oh. Oh, kaya siya. Yeah. It's a matter of given an opportunity. Yeah. I'm clear what, no, what we can, um, what, yeah, I think what we can agree on right now is that it, a lot of concessions and uh, has been made in the adaptation. You know, it's clearly different. Uh, a lot of things have been influenced into it. So it's a different product. So uh, one thing I want to bring this uh, discussion to is like how they treated Philippine like mythology. Like how, like there's been a lot of... Yeah, that's. I mean, there's a lot of like liberties they've done with the, uh, with the actual lore. Like, I mean, the original material itself is an adaptation of original Filipino folklore. Mm. So, what can you say about how they treated, for example, the the Nuno or the, uh, what you call this? I Glenn already talked about the white lady, but also like <laughs> the balang, etc. So, what in a way changed in the show? You know, like how did they, like how different is it to, and what is it? What is still intact? in the the portrayal of these mythical creatures. Ma, ma, may tanong lang, sa original uh, graphic novel ba may nagtatawas? Nagtatawas? Sa, Alam mo for, uh, for the for the ritual audience. na nagtatawas. At uh, nagtatawas is, is 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 a ritual where you determine a uh, supernatural creature behind a certain person or haunting a certain person. What you do is I, I think that the ritual would involve dropping wax on the on water. Ay, yeah. um, ginagawa niyan sa ano. Think, nasa graphic novel ba? May nasa yes, graphic novel ng tatawas. Ay, nice. I think it, it's in volume one, I think. I just remembered. Okay, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at that. Look that up. <laughs> pero wala oh, sa anime. Yeah. Pero wala sa, wala sa series. Yeah, wala sa Netflix series. It's there. Kaya, mm-hmm. ano. Okay, okay. Um, the source material is really good. I'm just, I'm just happy that I got them before it got popular like this. <laughs> <laughs> We're the OG fans. Yeah. <laughs> But if you notice, like the famous character of Nuno, you know, he's very different, you know, like um, the original folklore. I think, Borge, you made this comment saying that you don't call a Nuno by saying tabi tabi po. You say it when. Para malis, para kung di jingle ka or maapakan mo siya. Yeah, it's to avoid being urin- urinating on the Nuno. So there's no urine involved in the show. <laughs> Okay, okay, guys. Yeah. This is okay. As someone who uh, unintentionally actually delved into this because I used to teach it. Oh, cool. Remember, I have a subject, the right? It's a great yeah. works. One of my uh, sessions is about a swung in the Philippines. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so things to consider. You cannot evaluate the myth of Trece and then compare it to the original for two mm. simple reasons. Mm. We are as, as of yet still debating on what is original myth mm-hmm. because most of mm. the oral traditions mm. has added ons or has mm. variations. I'll use your tabi tabi for example later on. Mm. Another one, uh, another, and the second most important of all is universe nila budgeto. Mm. Who are we to criticize or to <laughs> evaluate how they want sure. to present their universe. Uh-huh. And the proof of that, para sa akin, that is so unique and that gives it a signature to their flavor. The first thing that I saw when I was casually reading it sa National Bookstore, alam niyo ko ano? Chris mm. ang gamit niya. Bakit Chris ang gamit niya? Chris mm. ang gamit niya because it's a popularly identified Filipino bladed weapon. Mm. Mm. But that's popular myth. Most Southeast Asian countries, may variation ng Chris. Mm. If you wanted to be more Tagalog, more Visayan, gulok mm. ang dapat gamit niya, hindi Chris. 
but they use the crisp because it is something that has had a Southeast Asian flavor in recent memory. And it identifies in the narrative as something as a signature to the character. Mm-hmm. So dun pa lang, we are already presented that they are inspired, but mm-hmm. they are not necessarily bound mm-hmm. to the notion of them clinging to the myth. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to the myth of the tabi tabi po, mm-hmm. you're assuming it's so that you will not be played upon by the nuno. Yeah. Because you say tabi tabi po. Mm-hmm. Hindi mo siya pinapaalis. Yeah. Ikaw ang nagsasabi na papasok ka sa teritoryo niya. Mm-hmm. Na ikaw ay tumatabi, ikaw ay lumalapit, ikaw ay nagpapakita, nagpaparinig, nagpaparamdam. Mm-hmm. At hindi mo siya ginugulat, hindi mo sinasadyang magambala siya. Mm-hmm. So it's not so that you do not pee on him. It's that if in <laughs> case you do something unwanted in his territory, you pick a flower, or you change mm-hmm. something, whatever. Right. It niya. was never your intent. Mm-hmm. You signal your presence. Mm-hmm. In relation to that, there is the notion of tao po. Anytime, mm-hmm. every time you want to ask or present yourself, we hear, how do you present yourself? Tao po. Oh. The first thing uh-huh. that comes to mind is, are you asking if there is a human person inside? Yes. But mm-hmm. its origin is separate, distinct. Mm-hmm. The origin mm-hmm. is, you're saying to the people inside the gated place, in the barangay, in the village, in the small community, tao po ako, hindi right. po ako masamang nila lang, nagpapakilala po ako. So there are differences and variations in how we evolve it over the narrative and how yeah. we assume is the sensibility. Uh-huh. So nagbabago yan. Give yeah. one example pa rin sa narrative. So ang context ay siya ay ang babaylan ng sangkatauhan. Mm. Not all Filipino cultures use the term babaylan, but mm. they generalize it. Mm. It's in order to have a unifying purpose. Mm. Essentially, siya ang well, adjudicator mm. plus medium. But there are other words and others, other references for that in our mythology. Mm. And even the use of the aswang is, is very much debated upon unless you cling into Peke Galiaga's creation of the Aswang. He yeah. popularized it because of his representations. And some people overlook certain key points of what makes an Aswang an Aswang mm. and focus more on the sensational aspects. Yeah. Even the context of what she does and how she does her job as essentially the medium, as the babaylan, is quote-unquote, doing beyond what is a role of traditional babaylan. Iba yung spiritual leader, iba yung judge, jury, executioner ng parang ghostbuster. Marami pa. So, I give credit to them in maximizing that storytelling and presenting it. But to me, it's very difficult to outright judge or critique how they represent it, expecting that they should do it appropriately when sure. they are allowed to create their own universe. Yeah. Sure. And then they and, made the appropriate adjustments. Babay lang mandirigma siya. Eh. So she's a variation of the babay lang. So, yeah. Again, I don't know. The, 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 thing, <laughs> the thing to <laughs> also consider is why and are we so... From both her parents. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Another thing to consider also is why are we now fixated on, or I, I, I too harsh a word fixated, who are we to judge mm-hmm. yung, ano nila, yung representation nila ng mythology? Dahil storytelling nila yan eh. Mm-hmm. Ang magandang uh-huh. ano dyan is, are we, the question to ask is, are we purists? Mm-hmm. In, is enough of it, this story mm-hmm. based on our traditions. Kaya nagulat ako eh doon sa tanong mm-hmm. ni Burge na, na may nagtatawas ba. Pag sinabi naming wala, are you less convinced? Mas bumaba ang ano mo, ang uh, pagkagusto mo. O ngayon nalaman mo may nagtatawas, does mm-hmm. it add on to your interest? Yeah, nagulat ako on. eh. <laughs> so now, lumalabas ngayon na the factor has more to do with what can what is relatable to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's the thing we should ask. Mm. How much of the storytelling acts upon to our childhood sensibility, mm-hmm. what mm. we enjoy? And we mm. should leave it at that because if we mm. are too hypercritical, definitely there are 
too many glaring sure. uh, questions. Yeah. The simple thing, sa, at least sa yung Nuno, ang mm. hindi ko maintindihan dun sa story ng Nuno, why is he in urban areas? Yeah. Ba siya sa manhole? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose Even that, beyond yeah. that, yeah. they are supposed to enjoy <laughs> nature, pero bakit nandun siya sa urban areas? Hmm. Same way everyone else goes to the cities. Gentrification, urbanization. Walang trabaho sa ano. Oh, walang, 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 walang manuno sa ano. <laughs> okay. 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 So, I go back to that sa, ano, eh, ano, sa tawag dito with Rick Riordan. It's really, yeah. the premise is what happens when they're already there. No? Yeah. So that's mm. the assumption. So, they live among us. There, I think the explanation for Nuno was <laughs> ano, he was there in the parang anthill by him or whatever but mm. dahil nga ang daming umiihi doon kaya siya <laughs> nag-transfer to the manhole yeah mm. yeah and I suppose that's which their... is even worse manhole <laughs> sure hindi <laughs> dumadaan yung waste kung nasaan siya ano yun yeah it makes diba? no sense mm-hmm. diba? very different ginawa siyang he, he was ano yun nga uh, an, a narrative tool in mm-hmm. In the, he in is the a narrative tool for environmental degradation and sustainability issues. Siya yung mm-hmm. premise na what happens if we do not take care of the environment. Mm-hmm. Na, <laughs> yun yun eh. But what uh, I like about the series is, yun, I mean, they cut a lot and they skipped ahead. Yeah. But they were also able mm. to combine a lot of the elements of mm. the story. Right. Make yeah, more than enough to get your interests. Like yeah. to see Nova Aurora. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that changed. was the best episode, actually. With, with, the, uh, with another episode mm. na about the Tianak. So yeah. those are two different stories that they exactly. put into one. So. It was good. It was a good adaptation. Yeah. Yeah, But good well, uh, for all the... Wala akong problema dun sa Nuno na sa Manhole for some reason that I find that thoroughly convincing kahit na wala siya sa punso. <laughs> Kasi, uh, again, uh, dun, dun, Sanay ka sa, <laughs> sa Anna Borg siya. Dura-dura. Ang Nuno kasi, uh, as far as I know, ang, Nuno is one of the most one of the most powerful of the supernaturals. And uh, I think he's all, uh, the Nuno is also the nar- narrative tool to show that knowledge or knowing what happens is your source of power. And since he's underground, <laughs> he knows what e- everything that happens in the underground. Wala lang mo talaga. Isa sa mga namiss ko. Yeah. Ano, si, ano, si Muning, yung ano, si Cat Lady. Cats. Oh yeah, she, yeah, the Cat Lady who... scored a lot of points with Cat Eater. Yeah. I suppose <laughs> the the reason why we're so critical is because people put their hopes on the, uh, the international audience <laughs> knowing our world. The problem is, I get what uh, Jules is saying, that it's too much and it could be, it, it won't be uh, unpalatable if there's so many details that, that they don't know. I mean, you need to know the traditions, you know, you need to know the uh, our culture, but at least it was able to be transmitted in a way that they get them interested and then they'll read more. And then they go to yeah, the yeah. source material. I don't, mind, I don't agree yeah. with that one. Yeah. I, I, again, I find the new no. It's, okay. it's very convincing. What is the question? Where is the new no? Saan ang pwesto niya, yung manhole niya? Saan kalye siya? Kahit, kahit saan kalye siya eh. Yun ang, yun ang nakakatawa sa nun. Saan ko yung, ano, yung logo Ayala eh. <laughs> diba? Y- yun yun eh. But, the thing to also, ano, that yung Borge actually raises more questions. Hmm. If he is a powerful entity and he's supposed to be grounded in a territory, nasaan ang territory niya? Bung Maynila kasi na, the manholes are everywhere. <laughs> Now, dahil buong Maynila siya, if we're sticking to the the myth, right. awak, let's say na natin city of Manila, right? Mm. I mean, for the no, sake of convenience of discussion, so hawak niya ang city of Manila. Mm-hmm. So meron na siyang quote-unquote, parang sabi na natin underworld crime boss, literally underworld <laughs> crime yeah. boss siya. Hawak niya yung Manila. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, which to an extent as far as the, the, the series is concerned. Siya nga. Oh, diba? Isa, isa yun nga yung, sa mga tribe. Yun yung yeah. ano niya, diba? Yun yeah. yung kanyang nature ng ano niya. Mm-hmm. So we also have to then realize <clears throat> na what if siya ang ano, what if ang purpose ng device niya is to also ano, not just focus on yung superpower niya, but mm. to ground the story to something na mas madali maintindihan ng tao. No, yeah. Gets me on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yung underworld boss. Yeah. 
Pero eh, kung uh, pero yung ano, okay, simple na natin. Hmm. Pero yung pagka underworld boss niya is also kind of going against kung ano ang nuno. Hmm. Ano ang nuno? What is an actual nuno in mythology? If you look it up, they are supposed to be what spirits, di ba? Hmm. Nature spirits. Uh, hmm. They're supposed to embody an area. Hmm. And I think it's kind of weird na kung underworld boss siya, supposed to be force of good, naging force of bad. Alam mo hmm. When the connotation is underworld is bad. Well, they did a twist. <laughs> diba? They, yeah. yeah. Is he supposed to be an agent of good or is mm-hmm. he supposed to be a tweener? Mm. Yun, yung, uh, yun yung mapapaisip ke. And yet, mm. he represents an entity that is supposed to be, well, technically neutral, but in the supernatural, for nature. Mm-hmm. So yun yung mga things na ano eh, dapat tanongin mo eh. Na yeah. ano, how, how, ano ba talaga yung role niya? Mm. Because that would also ground the story. Eh, dahil kung siya ay ba- bad guy ba siya o good guy siya. Because in the story, if you're focusing on the supernatural, there is always something that is on the side of humans and not on the side of humans. Hindi siya good or evil. Ah. It's yeah. someone who is on the side of humanity and someone not on the side mm. of humanity. Yeah. Yan ang dapat mo i-premise. Not just mm-hmm. na siya ay powerful or siya ano. If you really want to go to the mythos. Mm-hmm. Because definitely, the way na pinortray siya, on the side of humanity siya. Mm-hmm. For one, he keeps himself updated. Kilala niya sino si Trece. Yeah. Not just si Alexandra, but even the father right. and likely everybody in the line. Diba? <sighs> so, ano yun? So, da, yun ang thing na dapat na mas mag-focus tayo. Mm-hmm. Na ano yung role niya. More like I, Yoda nga siya, if you ask me. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got that vibes. Well, honestly, <laughs> like, for what I see it, and I think that's the whole point of, like, making uh, a swang in mythology in the city, is that they're, unlike the traditional form of, like, mythological creatures as being good or evil, they're simply migrants. Migrants living in the city, and they they are good or bad based on their own interests. So if they feel like, that's that's why they need Babaylan in the first place to keep them in order because they're very they, they vary. They're like people, you know. They have their own wills, their own dreams. Like Maliksi, who just wants to race, you know. Mm-hmm. Some people want to establish or even expand their own territory, and then in conflict with other tribes. But that's what happens when you have uh, these are basically stories of migrants. You know, that's the metaphor that the Budge and Kajos uh, world is doing. So that's actually interesting in a way. So what urban, do you guys think? urban politics absorbing the supernatural, which is yeah, yeah. That's what I that's what I got from the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lalo na sa actual literature. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, anyway, that so... really kicks off my even amongst the uh, as long as my mm-hmm. gang war mm-hmm. uh, Which is why, speaking of the politics level, it it becomes. Um, explicitly political the fact that well yeah. part of the adaptation is the overarching the overarching villains or the overarching uh, device is all that it's basically a mayor that is one of the masterminds of it and I think that's perhaps uh, close this discussion with like how political is dress and how they explicitly <clears throat> inserted political themes that some were already there in the original material but, all, but was also highlighted even more precisely because of the times right now especially with the quote-unquote anti-police sentiment right now, especially when, you know, there's this even comment in the internet saying, you know, is Trece cooperating with the police making it pro-police? And like, well, no, but it does have a, 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 like explicit commentary on the police with Guerrero still being the good mm. police, but the rest being corrupt. So what do you guys think about the expl- uh, political messaging of the material of Trece and the uh, adaptation? Ah, okay. So, Potato. If, okay. If, okay. So when you go to the actual literature, going back when we first began this talk, I uh, ano, earlier, generation namin to ni Glenn. Hmm. So what that means is you go back what happened 90s, uh, late 90s, hmm. early 2000s, mid 2000s. So ang ma, ang ano mo dyan is si GMA ang presidente natin noon. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mag, tapos magsasampung taon na ang LRT ay ang MRT EDSA so uso talaga yung nasisiraan na ang, sa Guadalupe yung MRT nung panahon na yon tapos yun yung I am sorry speech ni GMA kaya pagsakang malakanyang 
So it was written in a time na yun yung issue. May governmental corruption, may bias, and all of that. Tapos meron pa yung notion na uh, may ineptitude in public service. Mm-hmm. So that was the framework when you go back and if you try to put it in a timeline. Mm. If you ask me, how does that relate to the anime? I have to say, it is political if you look at it from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Meaning na there's they're trying to show na politically aware or conscious yung mga creators. Mm-hmm. Then again, if you are just me, like me, who admires and has watched old school Filipino shows, <laughs> TV, movies from the 70s, not so much 50s, 60s. Iba yun eh. Ibang gold, ibang era yun eh. Pero from the 70s, especially from the 80s and 90s, it's, they say it's a reflection of society. To me, no. It's just a simple uh, formula hmm. na hinopya ng show. So, wherein mm. someone has to be the bad guy and who mm. better than someone who is abusing authority mm. because it's something that everyone can relate to. Meaning, you anticipate that the only way the supernatural is able to exist if there is someone co-opting them or someone is colluding with them from authority mm. because it would be near impossible for them to exist without an authority figure in human society actively engaging them, whether for their services, cooperation, or their graces. Because in the universe of Trece, alam mo na that they exist side by side. Mm. Hindi na siya pinatago. Hindi siya hidden. Mm. It is something that is very much accepted. Mm-hmm. Well, to some extent, accepted. So when you go to processing that narrative, hindi siya unique ang storytelling. It just goes to show that in order for the supernatural to have a place, then they were welcomed or they were given given attention by someone or something who Ooh. happens to be of authority or position. A patron. Bingo. Yeah. So hindi, it's not an it's not a new story. It's not even that much political unless you say it is yeah a political statement but mm. rather it is an old formula there will always be a corrupt official there will always be an abuse of authority and then there will always be someone who fights the good fight because yeah. you have to have that kind of conflict if not it would not even matter because automatically if your only focus is going to be the supernatural versus humanity walang character development Mm. Dahil nasabi na natin yung issue is my migration. The issue is overcrowding. The mm. issue is fighting for limited resources. Mm. Sino ang yeah, ano mo? Well, humanity comes first, but that would make humanity the bad guy. Mm. <laughs> so hindi mo pwede gawing bad guy ang humanity if siya ang nagiging victim dahil hindi siya as powerful or hindi siya as in tune with their nature. So again, mm. When you actually look at the storytelling, it is very obvious na ang representation, the average human is powerless against the supernatural. And the supernatural is merely ensuring their survival. And in between, there are those who want to take advantage of the situation. So if you say that is political, then sure, that is political because it's all about human relationships or relationships or social engagements. But if you're talking about a political statement, Nasa sa iyo na yun, how woke you are. Yan ang two cents ko dyan. Yeah. Kasi ah. same here, uh, the, the politics of the series, the uh, Netflix series, it, it, it's fine. It's the usual. It's no, no, nothing impressive really. Hmm. <laughs> But it, again, it, the, how it was presented can be again. Sabi nga ni Jules, <clears throat> depende kung gaano ka ka-woke, <laughs> how much you would appreciate it. Yeah, but for me, I, I think it's their way to ground it on again on Filipino experience. Hmm. So you cannot remove uh, the corrupt politician from <laughs> such uh, yeah. such types of uh, uh, literary pieces. Mm-hmm. Glenn, how about you? Yeah. Um, ano nga, in terms of politics uh, sa people, mm. uh, ang pinaka maano mo nga, ma-identify mo the mayor talaga. But mm-hmm. ano eh, I think that's only ano, scratching the surface Um, and ano eh, um, 
na medyo kita naman actually sa show but more so sa source material and mm. perhaps in ano, in succeeding seasons hopefully mm-hmm. meron of course <laughs> yes, ano, eh, I, I borrow from Lord of the Rings here kasi mm. ano, eh, um, sa, sa Trece universe may, ano, eh, may sort of noble which are the Tikbalang and the mm. Ano, uh, the 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 Bagyon Electros tribe, mm. the electric tribe, and also the and then <laughs> somewhere in the middle would be the Gantis, yung mga mm. Gigantes. Right. And sa baba, yung mga malitno, yung mga aswang. So mm-hmm. they're seen as the ugly. Of course, pinapogi sila sa show, but <laughs> you can still spin that naman. Yung, mm. Like underworld, de ba? The the werewolves are kahit macho or pogi sila, they're, they're seen as the dirty one. So, mm. ano yun, may ganong aspect trend if you want to look at interracial... Class relations. Uh, class relations, mm. politics. So, may right. ganon din sila. Kaya, and you can see na someone like Trece is siding with sila. Tikba lang. So, ano to eh, if you notice, lahat to talagang a certain generation is really uh, comes to it. No? But in terms of sa politics... I know. Uh, for me, I know. I agree with you. It's more of awareness rather mm. than commentary. Like, mm. in the series season one, you have the, I know, you have the, the mayor, deba. Right? Mm-hmm. But in the source material and maybe in the succeeding seasons, then then see Madam. That's like <laughs> in, in a spoiler versus Daredevil, parang ganon. Yeah. And even and, and then. Pacquiao is there and a lot of yeah. uh, other people are there. So, mm. but uh, if that's a commentary, may, mm. pwede, but mm-hmm. maybe f- for me, the humans, na, ano, they're more of markers, time markers, mm. rather right. than politics talaga. If you want mm. to look at politics, I think, ano, yun, mas appropriate to look at the, yun, the, the tribes and the yeah. Hmm. And uh, different than uh, malignos in the comics hmm. and in the show, right? Yeah, re- regarding a, a reminder or at least making people aware, I, just going back a little to uh, the presence of the supernatural in the urban areas. I, I think the the primary contribution, and I think what makes the entire uh, series and even I think the graphic novel catchy, would be it's a reminder that the supernatural still exists even mm-hmm. in urban areas. See, urbanity, mm-hmm. urbanization will never eliminate. The supernatural, oh, and yeah. I, I can I can think of one example in Shanghai, yeah. one of the most urbanized centers. You have the Dragon Tower, they say mm. it's a, under one of their bridges. Mm. They they have one pole wherein it's decorated with dragons. Story mm-hmm. is, there was a, when it was being constructed, a dragon mm-hmm. was living in that area. A monk right. more or less sacrificed himself, literally. Uh. So he died after exercising the dragon. So mm-hmm. they they have that in the middle of one of the most urbanized. Cities in the world, you have that symbol of superstition. You have that mm-hmm. single pole in, in a freeway right. uh, decorated with dragons. So, yeah. so yeah, I think that's one of the best getaway, uh, takeaways from, that I got from mm-hmm. the series. Just again, supernatural, urbanization never eliminates the supernatural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, I remember speaking of that, it, it actually... <laughs> it it mythologizes like urban le- literally urban legends you know like like it's, in, in it, white well, ladies I, it's right. white ladies or even like the Chanax where it, in a mall where there are so many it's known for having secret abortion clinics or even like the is this the story of an alligator person in the mall <laughs> yung ano, was, si Sir, ano yan, Sir Robinson's Robinson si yeah. yung kakambal yata oh, oh. may ari <laughs> I think there's a. I'm, I'm not sure, but it was there in the in the comics. I think there was. But I think that's what. Uh, I think that, that yeah, that is what chess is all about. A reminder that the spiritual and the mythological are still mm-hmm. with us, and we have things to learn about them. And, uh, and they, yeah. Urbanization that... itself creates its own set of myths. <laughs> mm, there we go. That's something. Uh, I suppose let's we can close. Well, one more segment or theme before we move on to recommendations of course a lot as this is exploding in global you know popularity this is uh at, again like i mentioned 
a chance for the for the world to get to know Philippines. You know, it's not a perfect representation of the Philipp uh, of what Filipino culture is, but it 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 is a well, it's a start. So I, I'm curious. You know, I suppose the last question is this: uh, How do you how Filipino is the dress adaptation, and mm. what what do you think can be further to make it a bit more Filipino, or like should it be even more Filipino? Like maybe we're putting our hopes too much on something like this. Uh, what do you guys think about this? This on Philippine identity. In fact, that's one of the um, one of the debates here because Liza Soberano somehow because she is not as good in Tagalog, you know, she's being criticized when in fact eh, she, people say she's trying her best, you know. Mm. So, what do you guys think about that? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> you have to ask, how did they come to that point? Meaning, mm. Diba meron niyang script supervisor, mm-hmm. meron niyang ano, voice director, yung recording director. So, and then they publish it. Mm-hmm. So whoever was the showrunner, tinanggap nila yung output ni Lisa. Uh-huh. You shouldn't blame yung kanyang ano, if they came, if they produced it as such. Mm-hmm. Nasa kanila na yun kung bakit nila. So you can't always blame the voice actor. Sure. Because again, sino naglabas nun, sila ang nag-decide na, mm. in, na ano na yun, okay na yun for mass consumption. Second, thing to consider also is yung going back to my first question, Trese, was it in English or was it in Filipino? Yeah, it was in Taglish, you know, mostly in English, but some, I suppose, yeah, some mixtures. Like there's okay, a, and, and yeah. which means, dapat Taglish din siya if you want to keep to the pure yeah. way mm. to tell the story. Hmm. Yung talagang you use Filipino outright, hindi rin siya eh. Hindi appropriate sa ano niya, sa atmosphere nung, right. uh, nung animation. Hmm. Simply because the original source material is already Taglish, is already jumping from two, hmm. ano, from two languages. Yeah. Diba? And when it was switching, in, or quote-unquote, when it was using Taglish, it felt natural. Hmm. It felt in the moment because that's how... Right. The average Filipino, in the context, actually would converse with one another, de ba? Yeah. So that, ang lumalabas, that. Hmm. that is the norm. And yeah. now, pag pinilit mo na, even when you watch the English dub, mm-hmm. sa English dub, yung hmm. mga technical words, quote unquote, is in Filipino. Hmm. So the so there should, if you ask me, I, I was even surprised na gumawa sila ng full Filipino, de ba? Yeah, the Tagal. Look, dub. Lalim, no? <laughs> and and not just that. If oh. they were going to do the Tagalog dub, we, we talked about this earlier, Matt. They mm. should have reshot the scenes. They mm. should have changed the scenes, even yung yung paano na gumagalaw yung labi nila or whatnot. Yung yeah. how they presented it. They should have recut it if they were going to use uh, Filipino in the mm. ano in the dialogue. Mm. Dahil parang pinilit lang nila. Eh. And sometimes, mm. that's why mas maganda i-subtitle mo na lang kaysa i-dub mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yung may ganong atmosphere. Right. And um, so that's my two cents on that. And then yung mm-hmm. question mo with regarding sa is it enough? Ang tama ba yun? Is it enough? Filipino enough? Represent, uh, Filipino yeah. enough? Well, the literature itself, yung source material niya, I feel it fits the time frame when it was mm-hmm. originally created. Right. So it felt very modern Filipino. Post martial law, it's GMA era Filipino, the rise of the millennial reader, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> Appropriate ang kanyang vibe. Mm. If you ask me, that's how we were, and to some extent, how we still kind of are. Mm. And then, pagdating naman sa anime, I think the only thing that would, that I would add into it to make it feel as if made the thing, mm. is to make it a point na wala lang, artistic ano ko lang to, sensibility. So, mm. just keep with the taglish or the old English version and then pag mm-hmm. nag-Filipino sila, mm-hmm. merong subtitle and explanation sa ilalim. Alam mo yun? Mm-hmm. Yung, yung parang, uh, ito ang aswang, tapos may maliit na aswang. Uh, oh, Filipino, caption. oh, caption niya, yeah, you got it, Glenn. So, may ganun. Mm. May mabilis na soundbite man lang or may ano. Yeah. And I think that would make things more simpler. Mm. And you have to understand, most people have the ability, lalo na Netflix, di ba? 
can watch it and then pause and read. Diba? May chibi na may, may chibi na sa mga sila. Diba? Ay, diba? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tapos, yeah. One, one thing that would really knock my socks off and it would be funny is pag nilabas niya yung C sa first episode, labas niya yung chocolate tapos nilagay, chocolate, Filipino, peanut chocolate, uh, whatever. Yeah. Parang ganun, diba? Fan <laughs> subs, oo. Oh. If you really want to, ano, that would make it feel Filipino enough. Mm-hmm. Filipino product or peanut chocolate candy. Parang ganun. Right. <laughs> diba? Pag nakita mo yun, oh, ah, that that's what that is. Uh-huh. Eh, parang ganun. Tapos yung sinasabi mo, nawawala yung mga mapa. So, uh-huh. merong MRT. Na, tapos yung merong caption sa baba, Metro Rail Transit. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It traverses uh, EDSA, whatever. Parang ganun mm-hmm. lang. Right. That could add some more Filipino-ness mm-hmm. in explaining how it relates to us Filipinos without overloading the senses. Mm. Because you could always turn those captions off or you could pause them and read them, mm. but they would not add too much and overwhelm your senses. Yeah. Yung ano ko doon? Okay. Uh, want to go next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, yeah I think sure. I have. Yeah, I know. Uh, for, for me, I know. Like, sure. I know. Like what Borg said. Ako, I watched it with I know, English sub and dub. No? Uh, so, I know. Parang the, the the source material and what I have are I know, English ang language naman and a bit mm-hmm. of Taglish, of course. And I know. Parang I don't think we, we we need to pretend in order to call it Filipino mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. ano eh, context even the writers naman ano uh, eh, uh, both the the creators naman yeah. they're ano they they worked in corporate Philippines and that's English speaking talaga so yeah. ano eh, there's no need to pretend na kailangan ano uh, kailangan mag Filipino para maging Filipino. And they did make the Filipino version of the books. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, sa Balete Drive. Parang yeah, I remember that. Something. But, May kulay pa. You know, eh. Parang, of course, they're trying to expand their audience. And mm-hmm. especially in making the Netflix show. I'm sure there's uh, pressure on... On, ano, on being representative. So, kaya may ganyan yan. But definitely, yeah, mm. should have been taglish. But, <laughs> ano, yeah. but ako, yun, I stuck with English. So, yeah. ano, I have no complaints. And like mm-hmm. I said kanina, uh, they meshed a lot of the elements of different stories together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking for the crying tears that infected people, but maybe mm. another season. But yun, ako, yun lang, yung observation lang about the white lady. That could have mm. really set the tone for me. Mm. And, but otherwise, yeah, I, know, I, enjoy, I, I, I enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. it's really uh, a separate thing for me for, from the source material. But mm-hmm. uh, yun, I mean, maganda siya. Maganda siya mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I know. So, looking at that context and looking at how it was made. Sa akin, ano, um, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied on the outcome. So, there. Right. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Borge. Yeah. It, that, okay. I, okay. That, that, I think we need to ask first, what Filipino are we representing with Trese? Mm-hmm. So, okay. it is representing, changing Filipino sensibilities. It is representing yeah. fi- the Filipino in the urban Area, supernational urban area. And as far as that is concerned, I don't think it can be Philippine. It, it doesn't need to be Filipino or more Filipino. I think it is as it is. It, it's good as mm. it is. I, mm. I, I would have more complaints kung set sa sa provincia. <laughs> Pero hindi eh. okay. it's, it's in the urban areas. So uh, it's a representation of changing Filipino sensibilities. Yung flashback <laughs> sa makiling sila. <laughs> Oh, meron ba? May, meron bang episodes na nasa provincia sila? Yeah. Yeah. Meron. Si meron. Episode 1. <laughs> Saka si, ano, si Anton going to visit hindi, the Papay Lands, dude. Hindi, yeah. sa, <laughs> sa, first, sa first episode naman, hindi namang, it is set in the rural area, pero not, not in the villages per se. Hindi, yeah. baka ang nasa isip ni Borg, yung imbis na sila ay nasa kotse, nakasakay sila sa jeep na owner. Hmm. Well, ganun ba yung isip mo, Borg? <laughs> hindi naman. O nakatricycle sila, o nakakalabaw sila, hmm. pag sila ay 
not going ano na hindi kung ano kung, kung ang setting ay hindi urban community kundi rural community pero wala, wala naman sa wala naman sa wala naman sa series pero yung political ka rin kaya ganun ba 'yun <laughs> <laughs> besides the, nice besides the jeepney It's hmm. really the box type cars that really got me also. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I don't think it, it needs to be more Filipino. This as it is. It's good as mm-hmm. it is. But again, yeah. artistic sensibility, I think they can make the background more gritty. Than usual. More gritty. Yeah. Dirtier? <laughs> yeah, to an extent. But mm-hmm. other than that, yeah. 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 Okay, I, now I'm looking forward to them engaging aswangs in rural communities. Mga nagahanap ng mga d- May mobs. May konyo aswang tsaka from the aswang. <laughs> Ko- konyo na nuno. No, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Stop. Okay. <laughs> All right. Actually, uh, just to wrap, like to synthesize everything I said, I also feel the same way that, you know, well, uh, Trece is awkward awkwardly mixture of so many things you know of english of the crime drama of the supernatural and in a way that's what the filipino is an awkward mix of different things mm. and i it's it's not well of course if you look at specifics you'll always find something a bit off but uh, in large that is what the filipino is and i think it's a good way to have a conversation like this, you know, to uh, establish like who we are, what it, and the, what we can learn from ourselves, you know, uh, by looking at works like this, at least uh, what, as we've discussed, it's syncretic, yes, but it's also the life of like urban magic, urban mythology. Mm. And, and that's in a way, multi-tribalism, that's what we are, you know, we're, we're from, from different language groups trying to live together despite having different, Uh, cultures, different quirks, different um, uh, interests. So, and, and despite that, you know, we, we're all living together in, in in different shades of color in a <laughs> in, in the world. So, yeah, it's interesting. It the well, and they well, they meticulously even casted Filipino American actors to make it Filipino, but they need not, you know, as long as I mean, even some Americans in the English dub, they just. You know, they sounded more Mexican, but I suppose <laughs> <laughs> they sounded more Mexican. Yeah, at at least true. at its core, I think it does capture that similarity of being, you know, a mix of different things. That's what the Filipino is. We're mats, mga askal tayo. <laughs> but at least they're the story of trying to live together, live each other in peace. You know, um, make balance between uh, the superna- uh, supernatural and the unknown and urban. The urban condition is, yeah, it, it's a it's an accurate picture at least in that level. But I think that's one thing that we can continue to discuss some other time. If ever there's a season two, we'll get bring you guys back. But yeah, yeah, any other final words before we move on to recommendations? Yeah, anyone? And on that note, <laughs> I think there is among custom like huge. another side another side uh, discussion that could happen mm. I know that I just wanted to mention I know very Filipino Chinese parang binondo yung family yeah. so I just wanted mm. to mention that okay all right so yeah uh anyway so that was a hard discussion very uh very meaty uh but for now let's move on to our last segment which is recommendations where we recommend related materials that can help us further our understanding of today's topic. So I suppose let's move to uh, uh, Glenn, for hit, the Glenn, then Jules, and then Borge, and then I'll go last. So Glenn, what do you have to recommend for us? For me, ano pa rin, uh, pop culture. Pa rin. So mm-hmm. ano, tawag dito, si la, the authors are part of this group of other artists and in their latest... Um, what's this project? Yung ano, yung bloodlines ng Trece. Mm. So uh, the Renex try ano, uh, start beginning to expand the mm-hmm. Trece universe, and yeah. now their pals are getting in. And of course, one of the interesting interesting uh, crossovers that happened is with uh, Dakila, and with, this is with Ontiveros. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So his stuff is also good to uh, check out if you're mm-hmm. looking for other Filipino comics or novels that you'd like to get into. So there. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Jules. So um, this is more for those who want to learn more about the mythology. So there is uh, Professor Maximo D. Ramos. Mm. So his claim to fame is siya ang source material ni Pepe Galiaga for mm. most of his films. So he has authored uh, literally, well, you could argue na kung sa Greek mythology meron tayong Edith Hamilton, right? Mm. Yun yung go-to author natin. Um, Maximo Ramos has written... Um, essentially a compendium of Filipino myths. Mm. So meron siya yung creatures of Philippine lower mythology, meron siya yung tales of long ago in the Philippines, meron siyang the Aswang complex in Philippine folklore, meron siyang legends of the lower god, meron din siyang Philippine uh, demonological legends and their cultural bearings, myth legends and folk tales, tapos creatures of midnight, ano siya, um, marami siyang nasulat and this is based on actual na study. So, may mga source material ka. Like yung mga research from the 1910s, Commonwealth pa lang tayo, meron nang nasusulat kung ano yung mga tiktik, ano yung mga uwa. Mm. So, for those who are very much interested in actually research literature na may source material, you should look into ano, uh, Maximo D. Ramos. And, and what's funny is, nasa Shopee siya. <laughs> so, kung you do Ayos. not need So kung hahanapin mo, weird yan, lumalabas siya sa Shopee eh. Uh, yung collection ng books niya. So for those who are interested in that, yeah, um, you should check him out at least uh, for a literature. Then if you want more sa kagaya ng Aswang, um, years ago, when, um, one subject kasi sa Lasal allowed me to teach one segment. Yung film, it's called The Aswang Phenomenon. So it's by Jordan Clarkson. So, sorry about that. So mm. he made a documentary um, around 2010 and he, he did actually thorough research on where the Aswang myth originated and yung what is the possible inspiration for the Aswang myth. Uh, mm. Nasa YouTube yun eh. So people should just look it up to yeah. look more into those kinds of folklore na talagang merong research at merong backdrop and mm. uh, it sort of also um, deals with yung oral history natin pagdating mm. sa supernatural. Okay. okay. Uh, Borge. Uh, okay, so si, si Jules ay sa Aswang. Ako naman ay sa Babaylan. So I'm mm. uh, recommending a monograph by Professor Jules Salazar. So the title is Ang Babaylan sa Kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. So it's it's a it's a good overview of the role of the Babaylan in our early pre-Hispanic society. And I, I think to an extent he also comments on uh, their recent uh, current or con- contemporary uh, roles, even their roles in the Philippine Revolution to an extent. Mm. So so yeah, uh, I'm recommending this one. It's a good overview if you want to know more about the Babaylan. It's published by Bang, uh, Bagong Kasaysayan. So I think it's available online. You can contact their Facebook page if you want a copy. So it's very short. It's a monograph. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a journal article that be extended into a monograph. So yeah, this if you want to know more about the Babaylan, this would be a good go-to. Yeah. Or to know what Tresa is, actually. All right. So... My recommendation uh, are two websites. Uh, one is the Aswang Project, which is also created by Jordan Clark, uh, what mentioned by Jules earlier. And the Aswang yeah. Project is a hub of different uh, Aswang-related materials. Although it recently got under fire because, you know, why is he talking about Philippine myths if he's like a Canadian? Like, well, who cares? He's done great work in research. And there's a lot of, it, it sells <clears throat> even books and um, stories and newspaper. Uh, so it's a hub of related material. So check that out. And the second one is a related allied website, but it's also founded by my classmates in high school, uh, Carl Gaversa, and he, where he writes a lot of material. In fact, his thesis on MA was uh, a compilation of Philippine folklore, but also he writes his own stories about Filipino myths uh, in the modern times. And it was designed, uh, like, yeah, in art designed by Leander Henniston, also my 
classmate in high school. So it's funny. And they're good. they've gotten a lot of press ever since. They've been in, interviewed really, uh, as, well, as well latest stuff. I'll give them more press. Well, let's give them more press in the PI podcast. So yeah, so that's the Aswang Project and the Philippine Spirits. That's the name of, that's the name of the second website. Aswang Project and Philippine Spirits. So check those online resources out. They're very interesting on contemporary takes on Philippine mythology. Okay, so that is this is one of our biggest episodes. So we like to thank both Glenn and Jules Woo! for joining us. So hopefully, definitely, this won't be the last. Yay. We'll get you soon. Yeah, big round table, big round of applause. Yeah, and so we hope you you learned stuff. And, you know, Matt, do we need to I uh, know to have a female guest with us next time? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this has been. I just realized this has been a. A sausage fest of a podcast. We should probably get a female soon. But yeah. Are, are we not violating anything? Oh my God. <laughs> it's been too, all too male. But yeah. What, what, maybe I'll be sure to invite you next time. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Thank you, Jules, as well. All right. So if you like that, please like us on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, or wherever you get your podcast. And please remember to send us an email if you. You want to send us a message at podcastph at gmail.com. And until the next episode, Magandang gabi, mga kabiay.